One of the hardest parts of playing cribbage is the scoring. A lot of people, especially new players, get confused by it. So I want to help you by walking through every single way to score in cribbage. Let's get started. Before we get into it, though, you have to know what the value of the cards are. The value is the the value that the worth of the card, I guess. It's not worth points, but when you're adding the values up to get different kinds of things. So each numbered card, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are all worth their printed value. 2 is worth 2, a 5 is worth 5, and a 10 is worth 10. Okay? The exceptions to this that people get confused on a lot are things like the ace. The ace is only worth one. It is always low. The ace is always low. Okay? Some people play it where it switches around. No. The ace is low. It has to be on the end. The other ones you have to know are the face cards. The face cards are all worth a value of 10, which means that there are... Four cards worth a value of 10. These are called dimes and cribbage. Kind of important. Okay? With that in mind, it's time to get to actually scoring points. The first and most common way to score points, kind of like the building block of cribbage, are the 15s. When you can get your value of cards added to 15, you get two points each and every time that happens. So the most common way is to take a 5 and a 10 value card, and you put them together, it makes 15 for 2. That can happen with any of the dimes, and it happens that way too. Other couplets include the 6 and the 9, the 7 and the 8. You have to know what those are worth. You don't have to have just two cards. You can have three or four or five cards that add up to get to 15. So you could have an ace and a 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, and then you could have a 10 card. That would be 15 for two. And it, you can have any combination, but every time you get to that 15, you get two points for it. Okay? The 15s occur in both the play and the show. The play is the pegging phase, and the show is the, the counting phase where you count the hands. Now, when you're doing the play or the pegging, it has to be that 15. You can't have like a two already there and then you add 10 more for 12, and then you add 5, and then say, no, I put a 10 and a 5 there, that's 15. No, it's 17 is what the count said at that point. Okay, so it's got to match up there. Next up are the pairs. Pairs when you have two of the same card. It's pretty easy. If you have two of the same card, for example, like these two kings, then you would get two points for the pair. If you have three of a kind, it's basically just three pairs. You have a pair here, you have a pair here, and you have a pair here. So that would be worth six points. Four of a kind would be worth 12. And I know that's pretty fast. But if, so if you want to like see that slowed down, you can go check out this video where I talk about royal pairs and all the pair combinations in great detail. But for now, just know that when you make pairs, those pairs are worth two. Pairs count during the play or pegging and also the show or counting. Okay. And it's, it can be very dangerous when you have like a pair and then someone adds the other one to make three of a kind because then they still get the six points for that. So be careful with those. Next up are runs. Runs are cards in sequence in order and they have to be three or more. So in this example, I have a Jack Queen King. Those are three in order. So I get one, two, three points for that. If I had four in order, I would get one, two, three, four. If this was my hand and then I cut this card, that would be worth five. One, two, three, four, five. You get as many cards as there are in that sequence. Now, you can reuse the cards as long as they're not the exact same combination of cards. In this example, this is what we call a double run. And in the double run, I have a Jack, Queen, King. So that's one, two, three. And then I have another one, four, five, six. Aha! And then I also have a pair, so that makes eight. So you can reuse the cards as long as they're not the exact same cards, okay? And if you want to learn more about runs, I go into detail on all the different types of runs, triple runs, double doubles, double run of fours, all those things in this video here. Runs do count in pegging too, and interestingly enough, in pegging, they don't have to be in order. So you could have a two, a four, and a three, and you would still get three points. And then if someone adds the five, then they get four points, and it just keeps going from there. Uh, and obviously it counts during the show or the pegging, and that's just good stuff. Flushes. Flushes. I don't have a flush, so let me just hold on here. Make it pop up. 
Right here it is. All right, a flush is when you have four cards of the same suit in your hand, and you get points for every card in the flush. So you, if this one was four, you'd get one, two, three, four. You have to have all four cards in your hand to be the flush when it's your hand. If the cut card or the starter card is also in the flush, then you get an extra point for that. That makes five. If it's your crib, it has to be all five cards. The, for the crib, for some reason, the rule is it has to be four cards in your hand, in the crib itself and the starter or cut card has to match. And then it's worth five points. You cannot get a flush during the play or pegging phase of the game. It can only be during the show. So we're, we've covered now the most common ways to get points in the game of cribbage, which are... 15s, pairs, then three of a kind, four of a kind, runs, which have a whole bunch of variations, but they all are built on combinations of runs, and then the flushes, okay? But there's a couple weird rules that you should know about how to get points, okay? And then one of them is if you have a jack in your hand, if you have a jack in your hand and for some, and the cut card, the starter card, the one that's cut, is of the same suit. So the jack in your hand is the same suit as the king that's cut, or whatever card is there. You get one point for a funny rule called knobs, okay? So you get one point for that. This is missed very often. And when you miss it, then they might call muggins on you. If you don't know what muggins are, check out this video that pops up. But basically it's a way of stealing points if someone miscounts, okay? That's that. You can only count muggins, not muggins, knobs. You can only count knobs during the show or the counting phase of the game. To me, show and counting are not the same thing. Technically, it's called the show. You can only get it during that phase. You cannot get knobs during pegging because then you would get it both times. All right? The other weird rule is called his heels or nibs. One for his head or knobs, and two for his heels or nibs. When the non-dealer cuts the deck before the pegging starts, and it's a jack of any kind, the dealer pegs two points automatically right then and there, okay? For his heels. Two points right then and there, okay? This is a very often forgotten rule by new people. And you can't steal those points if they mess up. You just have to tell them or ignore it. And then they're like, okay, well, I guess I forgot it. Um, but if you if you want to be nice, you tell them. So that's for his heels. Just if you cut a jack right then and there, the dealer gets two points. And let me tell you, it hurts real bad if you, as the non-dealer, cut the dealer a jack for his heels two points and they needed two points to win and they win right there that is one of the most frustrating things of the game but on the flip side if you get it that way it feels great <laughs> so i mean that's it is what it is all right there are just two more two more ways of scoring i know it seems like a lot it does seem like a lot i know i get it but i've got a way to help you so stick around after these two things and because you need to see this thing that helps you it's like guaranteed to help you and never mess it up okay so, anyway, during the pegging or the play, same words, pegging, play, during that phase of the game, there are two other rules that come into play called go and 31. Uh, go also could be last card, too. So, in the play, in the pegging, you, can't, you add the cards together and you can't go over 31. If you cannot play, if it comes your turn and it's like 29 and you have a bunch of 10s in your hand, you can't play. You say go. If the other person can't play, the last person to play a card gets one point for go. And then we start over. Okay? So if I can't play and the other person played a card last, I'll say go. And then they take a point and I start over. So that's the go or last. That's the go. Okay? If you land right on 31, the person who lands on 31 gets two points right then and there. Okay? So as you're counting up, you get to 31. They get two points, and then you start over, okay? Last card kind of fits in there. If you are the last person, if you have a very last card, 
in the pegging. Every, all the other seven cards have been played, and you're the last one there. You play that card. You get one point for last card. It's kind of like a go. And as such, kind of like a go, if you land on 31, you don't get to say 31 for two and one for last card. No, you just 31 for two, and you're done. Okay? That's all of the scoring things, and it is really tricky for new people, but I can help. And you, I hope you've stuck around because this is guaranteed to help you. On my website, huddlearoundgames.com, I made a cribbage scoring bleh, a cribbage scoring cheat sheet for you that I think is really awesome, and I'll put a link in the description below so that you can see it. It is completely free. I want you to print it off, and during this in this cheat sheet, I go through every point combination, including shortcuts for the three of a kind or the four of a kind, and all the fancy types of runs and that kind of thing. Um, and I tell you how many points they're worth, and I tell you if they can be like 31 for two. You can only get that during the player pegging. You can't get that during the show. And all of the ones that you can have. And then on the back of that, if you print it off, which I, I hope you do, um, is actually a quick description of the phases of a cribbage hand as it goes like around. So... Yeah, it's really helpful, and I hope you check it out and get it for sure. All right? If you really like this or you know people who are struggling with their counting, then I hope that you share it with them. That would be really awesome. If you like it or have a comment for a question or any of that stuff or even subscribe, that would be awesome. And I hope this helps you enjoy the game of Cribbage even more because it's one of the greatest games ever created.